here at Jackie Robinson Center for the screening of our film, Pasadena Exploring Solutions to Reduce Gang Violence. I'm excited to bring this thing to the community. You know what I mean? We did a grand screening at the Limley Theater on September 13th, and all I wanted to do was continue to bring it and push our efforts to bring it to the community to share this film. It's a very powerful message, man. I just hope everybody receives it well and, and enjoys it. You know, I think this, it, this, this film really sparks a lot of dialogue that the community needs. I feel like this was a topic that I wish I could address years ago, but now I'm in the place where I could actually make that happen, and we did so. And I'm very, very proud of what we did, man. And I, I hope you guys tune in. If you need to, if you want more information and want to get in contact with me, please visit my website, sclass.com, S-C-L-A-Z.com, and you will see the film tab. There's lots of information. There's trailers. There's, there's information. So contact us. We'll be happy to come set up, do private screenings, and invite you out to the next screening. So take care. We appreciate you guys. Man, thank you guys for coming out. Um, I remember when I was laid off, I got a chance to work with Lola for the Violence Prevention Planning Committee. And I was inspired by that as well because it was a bunch of like-minded individuals coming together to discuss a, a serious issue in our community. Um, the difference was, I think, is, you know, I, I always think of what can I do myself along with in collaboration with others. And I really had that thought to make this film. And I feel like it came out really impactful. I'm very proud of it. And I hope that you guys feel the same. And followed by this film, we'll have a, a little Q&A where we'll actually get people a chance to share. And um, we'll have a little panel come up and have a little discussion as far as why they got involved in this film. Okay? So y'all ready to go? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. For you guys to be a part of this film, I I start on. You want to start it off? Sure. Why was it so important for you to be a part of this film? I'm 65 now. Uh, <laughs> my first contact with this uh, really getting into it was as a kid. But everybody had talked about doing a film or talked about doing something. You were the first one to call up and say, "Hey, I'm doing this." No, I really didn't care what it was going to end up like because it was a start. Uh, it, was a, it was a collective start. There's been a lot of starts. Uh, the city started things, the school district started, everybody started a million things. But it's not been put on film. And so now that it's been said and recorded, cannot be denied. All right, so we, we have a, a, at least a foothold now. And I don't want to take up no more room that, but at, 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 it's been over 40 plus years I've been hitting the street. And I'm proud that. Uh, of everybody here and everybody that wasn't on the film that's been doing this, uh, that, that's been hitting it. Because it's, it's just that first, it's not the first step, it's the step of the Like all my older uh, family members, grandfathers, uncles, all of them, you know, they helped build Old Town, City Hall, the, the Suicide Bridge. You know, they're a part of this city. And me, I've always been a problem in this city, you know, I tore, I tore the city up, you know, and for me, it's something that I got to give back. And so that's when we started this program to equip those parents, those moms, to know how to talk, the way I've heard some of you talk about, how do you begin to know where your kids are going and make sure you know every detail in their life? How do you track and really, um, it gives you skills and it gives you the support to be able to accomplish those skills. And so we saw about 10 kids actually leave gains as a result of that program in Pasadena. I think they may still have it in, in Altadena, but, um, but it worked. It worked because we were equipping the people that were the closest to these kids that wanted desperately to see their kids leave gains, but they didn't have the skills or didn't know how to do it. So um, there's a lot of good programs, but I thank God for the opportunity to be part of getting that one, at least for a period of time. And I thank you for being here for this awesome movie. Thanks. Thank you. Um, just to speak for myself briefly, I didn't really plan to do a whole lot of speeches. I wanted to make sure that they got a chance. Uh, a big reason why I did this film is, you know, I've sat in a lot of um, settings where this issue was discussed, and it's always a lot of well-educated people and the, the elite of the city. And when I look around, I'm always, I constantly kept thinking, well, where are the people who've been impacted the most by this issue to actually 
give their input. How do you come up with a solution to something without involving the people who experience it on a daily basis? So what this project meant for me was actually bringing those voices to the table to be heard. And I, that, that was one of my main things, because whenever we had those discussions, when I look around, those people were never represented. So now, I think this gave us a, a little glimpse of some of those people who've been impacted directly to share their thoughts <coughs> and what they deem solutions to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on. After watching the film and hearing other solutions, babe, I know you came late, but after hearing other people's solutions and even you gotta speak to your own, what other solutions stood out to you? You know what, this is the second time I saw the film. Right. And it was way different the second time. Okay. First time I saw it, the second time I heard it. Right. Right. And so what I think what it did was once they, once you hear it, once you know you know, there's no denial. Right. And so we live in a in a in a city of 142,000 people with 63 private schools and eleven private high schools. And so some of the solutions that everybody was talking about, about being involved in, this city's in denial, right? This city doesn't, our schools don't exist. Those private high schools exist. Those private schools exist. Our school district doesn't exist. So something like this, this documentary needs to not be seen by us, but by them, mm -hmm. right? And when you show the rest of this city, because this is a community issue, it's not a Northwest issue. Right, we always get identified with Northwest Pasadena. I never heard anybody talk about East Pasadena. <laughs> but why is there a Northwest Commission? Right, they want us to go to the Northwest Commission. You never heard anybody from San Rafael. They go straight to City Hall. There's no San Rafael Commission or whatever. Right, so as, as far as this, and, and what, what I heard for the second time is I heard it, and I think that the, there's so much positivity that everybody's talking about what they did for what they regret, for what they learned from it. They got an education from it. So we're set to learn, we're eager to learn, we're eager to receive. I, I do you know, praise the Flippers Foundation for being as one of the only places, but they're not the only ones. Right. You, know, you have a city council, you have a board of uh, realtors and a chamber of commerce, all these people provide jobs and housing and education support <coughs> that they ignore the very substance of the city that it is. Right, so, you know, like I said, I've, I've done a thing a long time, and I'll leave it at that. It's the city of roses and thorns, and they just don't want to talk about the thorns. But you've documented it, can't deny it. <laughs> I like that. What I, what I thought about the film is um, how we want to educate the kids in schools and stuff like that. It sounds real good on the history of the game from Pasadena. I like that idea a lot, but also you got to think about the um, kids that don't go to school. You gotta be out there in the trenches. You gotta go on Sunday. You gotta go to Jackie Robinson Park, Villa Park, Pinterestal Park, Washington School. You gotta get out there. Go where the people don't wanna go. You go to the snake pits, go to the projects, go up and down Sunday. On foot, you know, you gotta do it. You know, there's not a lot of kids that are going to school that are out there fucking up. You know? The ones that are fucking up, they ain't in school. Another thing that I, I thought would be a good idea too is uh, get some OGs, you know, some older cats from, you know, from different hoods, of, like PDL, ABC, whatever, North Side, South Side, VPR, whatever, get them to come together so that they can see that it ain't a black and Mexican thing. You know, we're, we're fighting against ourselves, you know what I mean? And, and that'll, that'll, that'll help them open their eyes, but they gotta see us do it. They gotta see us shake hands. They gotta see us get along, you know, so that we can set a path for them. Hey, I know, I know you didn't catch the, all of it, but just as far as when we think of solutions, like what are some solutions that you think of that stand out? Well, uh, of course, uh, one of them is, is just having more recreation, more things for the youth to do. You know, we lose some things every year, you know, it's less things for them to do. So it turn them on, we run away to the streets. You know, so just having a lot of a lot of uh, activities for them to do. When I was coming up, I had a lot of activities. You know, I just still, you know, was raised in the wrong areas and chose the wrong thing. But it was a lot of things for me to do. You know, I started just went the wrong way. But uh, just having a lot, a lot more things and stop cutting things and add things. You know what I'm saying? And 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 uh, and also, uh, everybody's picking up the youth programs like better ones where actual 
people that came through this can actually speak, like you said, and not, not people that really don't know what the streets is about tell the street story. You know, actually have people that come from it to tell it so kids can see where you know where you can where you can come from and where you can end up, you know. So, you know, just just more stuff for the kids to do more options. Because you know, like I said, the uh, the less options you may have, the quicker they'll choose the streets. Um I I kept hearing over and over things about mentoring, listening, and being present. Uh, this is the tenth year that we're the Skill Summer School is providing uh, summer school on behalf of the school. And you've been a part of that. Uh, the ambassadors were a part of that uh, last year. Um, the whole model, how that, how we even came up with the curriculum was talking to the students and the students told us, these are the things that are impacting our life that is keeping us from being able to focus on our studies. So this whole school is built around listening to them and providing the solutions for them that they're looking for. When we, uh, we do a pre and post survey every year, it comes out the same. And these are uh, low income students, gang impacted, uh, behavior issues, multiple apps. Seventy percent of those students all say in the pre survey that they did not have a single significant adult presence in their life to talk to about the things that they face. Five weeks later, the same number, 70 percent, says that they connected with an adult at the skills summer school they can talk to about the issues of life. This, I, how can you make it any more plain than that? Uh, when we track our own students, the, in our after school program, we track them from kindergarten all the way through college. But we found that the, the students who succeeded and graduated college not only had family, but they also had a mentor. The students that did not have a mentor struggled in college. So we need people to be present. We need people to listen. I just want to say that Throughout the film, I heard a common denominator, and that was I didn't have a father in the home. Or if I did have a father, uh, he didn't show much interest. Okay, That's a big thing for me because as a single mother raising two boys, they had a father, but he was out of state. He would come back and forth as you know he should, but he wasn't present as I was. You know, And I've tried to do everything I could to raise my boys the right way. I'm struggling right now with the oldest. I feel like I'm losing to the streets. And I'm never going to give up because I am that mother. I am that mother who's kept like a tight rein on the kids. But for some reason, my oldest, you know, and I just feel like mentoring is a really, really good thing to have. If you don't have a father uh, present in the household or that strong male figure in the household, within the household, it doesn't have to be in the household. There's men all around who can help you. I wish I'd have met some of these people when I did an event two years ago, and it was called I Choose Life, and that's my logo, I Choose Life. And what I did was I went to the hood, and I asked who was the OGs in the hood. I got about 12 men from the hood because I felt like the young boys needed to see somebody who they could mirror themselves with. They're not going to listen to me because I'm a mother. I'm the mother that walks into the dice game, get up. I'm the mother that goes to the pits. I didn't walk the pits from uh, uh, the past three or four months with my son, you know, after the Fool the Projects. But I see that the young men, they're not going to really listen to me, you know. So I tried to get the men that I knew, the men that I thought they might have respect, to come and talk to them as a panel, a long panel. And in the film alone, that was a lot of people. I think they need to hear it. I think it needs to be said over and over again. I don't care if you have to show them a 100 times within the next three months. It needs to be shown. It needs to be bringing more of a group of people. And it needs to be shown to the folks that's just kind of turning their nose and looking over it. Sure. That's what I think. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Um, in regards to solutions, two things stand out to me after watching the film. Uh, one is accountability. Uh, watching the film, I saw that everybody, every gang thing, ex gang thing, or whatever, they were very accountable for their actions. They were, they took responsibility for when they were the best citizen or the, or the best father or the, or the best uh, person they could be. And I think if we all exercise a certain level of accountability, regardless of what we've done when we were younger or we didn't get into, 
we can actually become more of a solution because a lot of it is denial. A lot of the folks who are from this part of town, uh, from this part of the town or the neighborhood or whatever, they, they have to say, this is my community too. You know, it's not just, oh, I don't have to deal with that, my kids aren't that, and all that. They have to be accountable to say, this is my community. And same thing with us. We have to be accountable to say, what can I do? What can I? And the second part, uh, the second solution was, uh, that kind of resonated was, there's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of gaps in our community. There's a lot of gaps in services. There's a lot of gaps in, in homes. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows, but yeah, we live in like the group home capital of California. Pasadena and Altadena together, there's more kids in placement than a lot of places. And uh, so there's a lot of gaps. And I think as community members, we have to fill in those gaps however we can. Like, like uh, Josh said in the film, we don't necessarily have to volunteer for a program as long as you're available in the streets right. or in the neighborhood. Right. So we have to make ourselves available to a lot of these programs and to a lot of these individuals who don't have father figures, who don't have programs, who aren't even in school because they don't have the focus or, or the means to, to, to focus in school and be good students. So that's the two takeaways I got in regards to the solution. And one is accountability. We have to be more accountable for our actions and we have to relate to the issues, whatever those issues are. And second, we do have to fill in the gaps that are missing in our community. Yeah. I actually want to kind of get you guys involved and get to hear what you guys have to say. We actually have an officer here, so I, I definitely have to swing it your way to just to hear what you have to say as this piece of work. It seems like everybody, everybody in the city uh, turns their heads on a lot of different issues. And I think, I think when you said there's a lot of beginnings, but this is a finish and this is something that's been stamped and it's, uh, it's been documented, how many beginnings do we have that nothing, everybody sits around and talks about everything. Right? There's a lot of talk, not only in this city, I mean, it's, it's, it's socially, everybody talks about everything. But what really gets done? You look at this, all those guys that were in the film, I guess I've been here 28 years, those guys, when I was a young man, they were young men. That's who I was chasing around and got the play with. And to see how they change in the direction that they're going, if they can do that, we need to step up and start doing something a little bit different. We'll connect because I know a lot of people have asked me. They, they keep trying to push me on the police. I said, we'll get to them. Don't worry about bringing it to the community. But seriously, this is something that everyone needs to see. So we will definitely reach out to connect and give you, your staff, a chance to, to view it. Um, but right now, we're just really focused on trying to bring this to the community and, and, and to continue our efforts. But it's definitely something that we will extend your way. Go ahead. Um, first of all, I want to thank everyone at the press for being so vulnerable and letting us hear your story. Because uh, a lot of us don't understand it. Um, I was born and raised in Pasadena. I actually work for Pasadena as a teacher. And I really think that part of maybe a solution would be really getting involved in the school system. Um, so I'm a special ed teacher. Uh -huh. And um, I work with a lot of black and brown kids. Um, what I've seen in the past is there's a lot of people that don't understand. There's a lot of layers to this. There's poverty, there's um, absentee parents. Um, there's people that have a different lens. They don't get it. And just like Mr. Hampton said, kids are written off. They're dehumanized. Because a lot of these kids come from lineages of families that are connected to gangs. And that is really sad to watch, you know? My name is Andre. Uh, I've been born and raised in Pasadena. I never got into the game things, but I had a lot of friends and family and stuff involved in it. But what I see with the community, if we all notice, there's a lot of community development going on. A lot of building up of apartments here and there. And a lot of times I drive by, I don't see nobody that's from here helping build that. When you put your own sweat, blood, and tears into something, you tend to care about it more. So if I go to another city, I might not care about spitting on the ground or throwing some gum on the ground. But if I'm here and I help build this city, I'm going to care about it more. That's going to push me to push that on other people. So we have these big construction companies come in and build these apartments and things of that nature that us as a community, we can't even get afford. 
-hmm. You know, <laughs> we seeing all these things getting built up, everybody making money, and we can't even be a part of it. And so therefore, it, it becomes a disdain in you, like, kind of have a sort of a hate towards it, like, I can't even get a job in my own community, why should I care? So that's part of the mentality that needs to change within the city. You know, maybe, okay, you have a development going on, make 30% of the employees part from the city, you know? Because I know a lot of people that live in Inglewood and they're building a stadium, and part of the deal for them to build that stadium was hired within the community, you know? And so that gives people to stay there, to care about their city, and I think that's some sort of a solution that might happen as well. Thank you, sir. That's good. That's good. <coughs> I'm born and raised in Pasadena, and sometimes when I go to other cities and go to different events, I find it humor that people, when they hear Pasadena, they think, oh, y'all got the Rose Parade, Old Town Pasadena, you have this, you have this, but when you cross girl to Washington, you in a whole nother hood, you in a whole nother environment. Mm -hmm. It used to be so bad to where the police tell them, if you pass there, Y'all on your own. Don't go past there. I see people sit there come as tourists and everything. When you come up here, oh yeah, you in a whole other environment. You're going to get robbed and get killed. I just see one of my best friends. Didn't even make it to 18. Frank Mitchell, we call him 50, didn't even make it to 18. When he started doing positive, they took him away. People are understanding. When they're like, oh, you got gangs in Pasadena? Yeah, like, what do you mean? Like, go up there. Put some blowing off if you want to. You gonna really sit there and meet them little school whoops, whatever you want to sit there and call them how you behave. The police, like, I love how you said you need to get the community in this more. I'm disappointed, I'm disappointed in some of the community that we didn't get a lot of them out here to where you can see us. We can see us physically and not just sit there and be like, oh yeah, you know, they're this, they're that. No. A lot of animosity come with the police because half of the time the other ones not like that towards you, but we got a trust issue with you because sometimes we can't even trust you or depend on some of y'all when we need help. So what do we do? We come to each other. Or when you sit there and you get somebody that's been in jail and you want to sit there and reintegrate, like you say, like he said, we can't even get a job, but you want to reintegrate us to what? If we can't get a job because of our past, what you gonna make us do? You gonna make us go back and convert back into our past and try, you're trying to stop that. The whole time being there, I had to adjust my approach to families, because every time we got a referral, I'm the person that's to follow up with the, the family. I had to call them and say, hey, we received a, a referral from your student. How, we, you know, do you, are you guys interested in services? But every time, what I noticed, any time I ever said either therapy, mm -hmm. it was already in the black stigma. community, it's a wrap. Yeah. Nothing wrong my kid, my kid ain't crazy. So we already okay. have this stigma in the African-American community and Latino community yeah. that Therapy means something's wrong with me, I don't want it, off top, right? So what I started to do is I started to change the terms mm -hmm. to help some of these kids get services. I started saying getting support mm -hmm. and getting counseling. People were a little more receptive to counseling versus therapy. I mean, virtually the same thing, loose terms, but I, the referrals started rolling, my caseload started building because I used a different word, one word. But we have a, a stigma in African American community as far as counseling. As soon as you say uh, therapy, it's, it's a wrap. That family, oh no, no, I'm good, no bad. Hey, so I love that everybody's here today and I'm glad that you brought everyone together. When we leave this room, the kids in the streets are our kids. And I feel like that's been a disconnect that you and I have talked for more over a decade about how we can't approach a kid anymore and say, hey man, you can't be doing that anymore when you're in the street because Either they get offended, their parents get offended, or something. But uh, as anybody that's known me or my kids know, you see my kid acting the way, you come tell me and you tell them themselves, yourself. That way they know, hey, I'm looking out for you because we are a community, because we are a village. And um, I don't know if I told you five, 10 years ago, but I grew up in the manners. I knew what it was like, drug influence, gang banging, uh, stealing in front of me. Uh, I think the first, encounter in gun violence I must have been like six and it just happened right in front of our win on our window and so I tell my kids this all the time and they're like man whatever I don't I don't like I don't see that part of you mom so w with that I want to just make sure everybody takes that with them like your kid is my kid my kid is your kid and I really want you to take that home today we don't know everything and we are looking for new opportunities on how to spread the word you know what I mean 
Um, is there anybody here that has anything that they want to say before yes. we go ahead and wrap up? Yes, uh, yes sir. And this is the, to go back to what my sister was saying here. Uh, housing is at the center of every injustice in our city right now. And uh, our, our mayor went on record at a State of the City address saying that he was against rent control and that no one in the city council was for it. 2020 is coming, and I, the, because Steve, you already know how passionate I am about this. The difference between the mayor that we have and the mayor that we could have had is Northwest Pasadena. Northwest Pasadena did not vote. If the people who were registered in Northwest Pasadena had voted, we'd have a different situation right now. And so I'm saying 2020 is coming, and a lot of our, our officials are coming up for election, and we need to be registered and vote. The bottom line is, I wish that, I'm going to reiterate what she said, when we all leave here, we all feel like we want to do something, we all should step up, we all should do this, do that. I want to say one thing. When I spoke earlier, I don't want to make this about me or my family, it's about everybody's family. I do know that when we're speaking to these youngsters and when we're talking about what's going on with the young people, the young people coming up and we want to make these changes, you have to sort of kind of mirror them with somebody who looks like them, somebody who kind of talks like them or used to. So I commend these men who used to do the wrong thing but now want to do the right thing. I commend a man who wants to step up and show the youngster, well, this is what I did, but this is not how you should do it. And they, I found that they're more apt to listen to somebody like that instead of like me, a woman. I can't really tell them too much. I can beat them over the head with it all day long, but doesn't mean they're gonna listen. So all these people that you have in the film here, I see a few of them here, but half of them, they're not here. I think it would be a great help to have them I mean, maybe at another forum, you know, do the same thing and sort of like, you know, this, have another panel. When you show the film, do it again and again and again. And, you know, just instill that in the young people. It does take a village. Basically, I just wanted to say two things. One is uh, I'd like to thank all of you for being in the film. I mean, it, it wouldn't be a project with, uh, without you, like, literally. Um, and I'd like to thank everybody who came to watch the film because this is the film. Uh, it's not about us being filmmakers and making a film to make movies to make money. It was about a solution, you know, so this is the more important part to us, more so than the movie, for us. And uh, aside from that, I also want to say that uh, when we started this, it was a game film. We wanted to address games, but now that I've seen it twice in the public setting with the community, I see it's a community film. Yep. It's not, it's more than a game film. This, is, this movie is about Pasadena. Yep. This is the documentation, just like you said, it's on record of what this city is and what they don't show in the media. So I, I hope everybody took something away from it. And I hope everybody continues to be involved and spread the word and not just worry about the film, but the word about the solution to it. Thank you.